Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. The new Jackie Lambie Network MPs say they're just days away from reaching an agreement with Jeremy Rockliffe to help the Liberals form government. They say they have no intention of bringing him down, but are keeping their cards close to their chest on what they want in return. These are the fresh faces in control of the government's future. We've all worked hard and, you know, it's paid off and we're here now and we can have a positive influence on our government and work for the people of Tasmania. The Jackie Lambie network riding high with three elected members, putting their success down to disaffected Tasmanians. It was basically that people just felt they weren't being heard. They just weren't being listened to. They're yet to elect a leader or form firm positions on key issues, but have indicated they aren't on the same page as the Liberals on transparency, the stadium, native forestry or the salmon industry. We sit very centrally. You know, we're, we're going to bring a balance. We're going to bring um, a team effort to uh, whatever we, we do. Yeah, we're not career politicians. We're just normal people that have just want to try and make a difference. They say a deal to provide support to a Rockliffe Liberal government will be completed in coming days. They aren't asking for anything in return, yet. Having the balance of power uh, is really useful for us. Now, yes, at the moment we don't know how to use it, but I can assure you we will learn quick. There's three new Greens too, confident they'll make their voices heard. Housing and homelessness is a huge issue. Restoring the, the health system is uh, a great priority uh, for me as well. The person that I am in Parliament will be the same person that I was in the counselling room or nursing people, very much listening, caring for people and working hard. Forget the crossbench. The Liberal Party's own factions may cause Jeremy Rockliffe headaches. New MP Erica Betts, leaping to the defence of Clarence Mayor and Conservative ally Brendan Blomley, revealed to be facing party expulsion for publicly canvassing an independent tilt at Franklin. They're going to have a civil war now and I can bet you that Jeremy Rockliffe won't be the one left standing at the end. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's tourism industry is hoping for anything but a bleak winter calendar. It's busily preparing for an influx of visitors, despite many popular festivals putting their events on ice this year. Taking the plunge into winter. <coughs> tourism Tasmania is back with its largest off-season campaign yet, encouraging visitors to embrace the cold and become a winter person. People really understanding that Tasmania is a great winter destination. Offering hundreds of uniquely Tasmanian experiences. It's anywhere from cold water plunging to um, dark sky walks up on Kunyani um, to lots of great events around the state. A bit of a spa experience in uh, Hobart's winter on the waterfront. Tagging the state's weird, wild and wonderful draw cards across the country, fueling the visitor economy's fire over the usually quieter, cooler months. Trying to sustain businesses throughout the entire year. So our businesses can keep their staff on and really contribute. But with many winter events hanging up their coats. Challenging time for events to operate in this environment. There's rising costs, but there's also a change in what people are looking for. The Tasmanian tourism industry is turning up the heat, confident it can withstand the icy industry conditions. Look at how we can really foster new events, new innovative things to take on the mantle from those events that have that have put the hard yards in. Ready to discover the wonders of a Tasmanian winter. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Whether you felt better rested this morning or your body clock is out of sync, the Sleep Health Foundation wants to hear how the end of daylight saving is affecting you. It's running a survey on the impacts of the controversial clock changes, saying more evidence is needed to create a national policy. The minor clock adjustment can have a big impact on our body's circadian rhythm. When we change the clock, then uh, we change that alignment and this can lead to sleep loss. There may be uh, an association with a number of health conditions. Visit sleephealthfoundation.org.au to participate in the survey. A group of Tasmanian students has worked together with a Chinese school to help solve a global environmental problem. The aim of the project is to develop skills to understand nuances in communicating with different cultures. 
learning how to communicate across different cultures. These Newstead College students partnering with Jian O Middle School in China in a global citizen boot camp. We have been getting to get others' perspective, especially the school in China. So it's, it's going good so far. We're just talking about cultural awareness and how we as Australian students can be aware that Chinese culture is different. For this three-hour session, they've joined together to find solutions to combat pollution worldwide. Inspired by the Ocean Cleanup Project, which developed technology to rid international waters of plastics. The challenge to do some problem solving, some just thinking individually and then also some group based thinking. And then they'll use that hopefully to take into the classrooms with them for the rest of the year. Project Global Citizen started in 2017 with the aim to develop cross-cultural skills in students to help them thrive in a global marketplace through a series of workshops. The experience already making an impression with the pupils. It's interesting to see how they work as a team as opposed to how we work and it's very collaborative. Being at that level of awareness where you're accepting to other cultures and understanding that what might be common sense to you might not be common sense to them. Developing Tasmania's next generation to become effective global citizens. It's really important that as people go into the workforce or go into volunteering roles or even just in the community that we understand that other people's cultures don't necessarily reflect our own. Mark Zita, 7 Tasmania News. Concerts, street art workshops and skating competitions are among the events being held around the state in coming days as part of Youth Week. This year's theme is community connection with a focus on the achievements of young people. Young people are the next generation. The next generation of decision makers, thinkers, um, carers, you know, if we're not involving them, it's, it's their future that we're working in. And I know lots of young people who have done so many amazing things and I think Youth Week is just an amazing place to showcase our abilities. A program of events can be found on the Youth Network of Tasmania website. Hundreds of students are starting the school morning on a nutritious note thanks to Variety Tasmania's breakfast program. A dozen more schools have come on board with a new partnership with Aurora Energy helping power learning throughout the day. Breakfast has long been regarded as the most important meal of the day. Now it's being plated up for Goodwood Primary School students. They walk in the gate feeling a bit anxious about coming to school and they run straight to the breakfast club and have a chat and have something to eat and then we find that then they're more settled in the classrooms. The food is funded by Aurora Energy, which will contribute $50,000 a year to Variety Tasmania's breakfast program until at least 2027. When you're hungry, um, the rest of your day is pretty, pretty difficult, so to think that we could be a part of helping in a practical way of feeding kids in the morning means that they start their day on a positive note, can concentrate, uh, and also a lot of your best memories in life are shared over food. The Boost will see breakfast clubs set up in 12 more schools, bringing Variety's statewide total to 39. This is just another way that we can help families doing it tough. Um, food is one of the things at the moment that many people are struggling to you know, afford. The program also aimed at parents. We're offer offering tea and coffee every morning. We want those schools um, to provide the, the, uh, uh, an environment where uh, parents can engage with the teachers uh, on everyday conversations about their children, about their household. Making sure everyone has a sweet start to the day. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Well, a basketball fundraiser is bouncing back for a fourth year. Supported by the Jack Jumpers, the Shootathon Showdown will see local clubs raising money online. Each dollar donated equaling one shot at Swisher's Hobart or its Launceston site. The proceeds going to Cancer Charity Canteen, helping young people manage their diagnosis or deal with someone else's. My mum was diagnosed when I was uh, 12 and passed away when I was 16 and I can't imagine my life without Canteen. I don't think I would have got to where I am now. My mum's just come out of her 10th surgery in 18 months for cancer. So as a 39 year old, I know how tough that has been for me to deal with. So I can only imagine what uh, kids 12 to 25 have to deal with. The Shootathon has raised $150,000 for kids charities since it started. This year's event taking place on May 4.
It's been a long time between drinks in the TSL for Glen Orkey, 1,015 days in fact. So it's no surprise they're still celebrating Saturday's 10-point win over North Hobart, their first since round 13, 2021. The captain says they still have a lot of work to do, but he isn't putting a ceiling on just how far they can go this season. Pressure, you put, you put the heat on an opposition, you never know. Um, and I think that's one thing that we'll, we'll pride ourselves on. You know, we're a young, energetic group. We bring the heat. Two in a row would certainly be a huge treat for long-suffering fans. Glenorchy plays the so far winless Lauderdale on Saturday. Ed Harrison Gunther is the Crips Player of the Year. Three vote winner from Glenorchy's drought-busting win. Kinbrew's Kieran Lovell, the top vote taker against Launceston, while North Launceston's Jack Event taking the three against the Bombers. Tassie rider Jed Beaton is leading the MX1 Championship table, jumping to top spot after a good performance in round two of the Pro MX in Horsham. A second and first place in his two races and up to leapfrog round one winner Kyle Webster in the standings. Good evening. Today's showers persisted in the west and over Bass Strait with isolated showers extending over remaining parts this afternoon. Hobart and Burnie, 19. Launceston and Devonport, both 20 degrees. Across the state, St Helens, 21. 20 for Lowhead and Friendly Beaches. 19, the top for Flinders Island, Wynyard and Bushy Park. Mariah Island and Grove, 18. King Island, 17. Strawn, 16 degrees today. The visible satellite shows a frontal cloud band crossing the state today. The cold front over Tasmania extends over parts of Victoria and South Australia with convective cloud developing about eastern states. Severe tropical cyclone Olga can be seen spiralling off the northern coast of WA. Tomorrow, the large high to the southwest of the country is strengthening its ridge over Australia. West to southwesterly winds 15 to 25 knots, reaching up to 30 knots in the south and lower east. Southwesterly spills building up to three and a half metres. Tomorrow, a strong wind warning has been issued for coastal waters between Wineglass Bay to Low Rocky Point. Becoming cloudy in Hobart tomorrow, 15. Partly cloudy in Adventure Bay on Bruny Island, 16. Increasing showers and a very cool 11 degrees on the way for Taralea. Cloud continues in Launceston, 18. Much the same in Devonport, 17. Sunny skies in Bridport, 18 is the top there. Grey skies and showers about the west, Burnie, Strawn and Marawar, all 15 degrees. Fine and sunny conditions for the east, St Helens and Whitemark 17, Swansea 16 degrees. Wednesday, showers about the west and far south with possible morning fog. Thursday, isolated showers about the west, far south and the northeast, otherwise fine elsewhere. Friday, scattered showers forecast for the west and far south. Showers easing in Melbourne tomorrow, 16, fine in Brisbane, 29. Cloudy in Adelaide, 19. Showers in Sydney with an expected top of 23 degrees.